Imagine creating beautiful boxes just like these. Well, you can, and it's much easier than you think. Gifkin's Dovetail manufactures the easiest jig on the market. It's the only Australian-made dovetail jig. It's so simple to use and cuts precise joints every time. There's no measuring, no fiddling and no fuss. We even offer box making courses to suit all levels. And of course, every purchase comes with our after sales service. So explore our website. Hi folks, Cole here from Gifkin Stovetail. Welcome to the show. This is our first, um, first venture into this, um, into this show. Uh, this type of thing. So what we will be doing is um, giving you a little bit of an insight into what we do here at Gifkins. So the way the show is going to work is first of all I'm going to show you what a package looks like. So I'll get a package, have a look in it, we'll talk about what's in the package and then um, once we've done that we'll do some test joints. That's for today we'll do some test joints and then um, what we're going to do is going to make a little box and I'll talk about the little box after we've uh, gone through the, sh the, the package. Now the package that we're going to talk about today is our standard solo jig. Now this is the beginning for most people. This is what we um, uh, tend to send people who you know, are a little budget conscious um, who, who want to get started and this is right at the beginning of everything. So this is what we get in your standard solo pack. We'll talk about the other packs later but this one here will go on with this, just, just what's in this pack. So of course what you're going to do is you're going to get a jig. So the jig looks like that. It has all the working parts on it, so you don't have to sort of go searching for bits and pieces in the beginning. Um, you've got your stops, you've got a little black and red knob, you've got a, a template on the bottom, and now the templates, you can choose your template. Um, we have five to choose from. Um, I'll just show you what they are anyway. So this one on the bottom here is the A10, which cuts between 5 and 13, uh, five and 13 millimeter material and then you'll have all of these four here the standard size got a H10 which is the smallest one we've got a couple of finger joint ones the F5 and the F15 and the bigger of the, uh, the dovetails which is the B10 now we're going to talk about those a little bit later but you can choose any when you buy your solo jig so I'll just put those aside for a sec and uh, we'll go on with what else is in this box. Now when you buy the jig you will also get the two router bits that go with it. I'll just put this aside for a sec out of the way and I'll go to a different camera this one here and you can see our tools come from a Carby tool in Melbourne so they'll cut all the, the router bits and they, they make the router bits for us. Um, if you can't get them from us or you can't get them from your local hardware store, um, probably a good idea. You can always go straight to Carby Tool and hopefully they'll have some for you. Um, at the moment, they're out of the uh, dovetail bits. Um, so we're struggling a little bit with that at, at this point in time. There's just a, a manufacturing glitch because of COVID. But hey, we'll... We'll catch up with it later. Now, the other thing that, we cut, that comes in the box that's very, very important is this thing. All right, your instruction manual. The instruction manual will help you through most of the te techniques that you'll probably see on the show anyway. You've got something to refer back to. We will go through pretty much everything that's in this over the period of weeks that we're doing the show. So 
you can look at it, refer to it. I will say things and you may need to, to, to refer to your book later down the track, but it's there to help. So put it somewhere safe um, and just refer to it regularly. It's, it, it's a real, it's got a lot of information in there that's, uh, that's quite good. So that's the other thing that's in there. So they're the three, they're the important things in there. Now with the, with the, whoop, with the um, jig comes these two little Allen keys. The big one is used to take the two screws off. So if you want to change over to a different template, those two screws are all you need to take off. If you have the older model uh, jig, these templates are actually designed to go on the older model as well. So it will have five self-tapping screws in it. You just take them out put the new template on. The new temp the older templates were a little bit smaller. They were um, uh, a little thin. I think they were 12 mil thick, the old blue ones. They still work, but the new black ones are 13 mil um, and really, really nice to use. Now, the other key is very, very important. This is one that you need, and I'll just grab a different route a bit. If you look just bear with me with the focus thing, folks, because I'm having a little bit of a trouble with that, but we'll, we'll sort it out. In here, you can see that there is an Allen key right there. Right? It's in the sleeve that supports the bearing. That Allen key is for that, so don't lose it. What's happened? You're trying to be closer. I'll let yeah. you know. You can't... Um, Sorry, that was Pam in the background. Um, the, director. the director, you might say. <laughs> so what we're looking at is that little Allen key. So save your Allen key, keep it somewhere safe. We do have them for sale if you want to buy a new one. We have, um, they have the grub screws if you happen to lose one, but you need to make sure that's tight all the time. If it keeps coming loose, your best bet is to take it out and put a little bit of Loctite in it. Okay, so keep it as, as uh, safe as possible and make sure that that grub screw is safe. All right. So if you, if you lose the grub screw, we can get them. Okay. So. Right. Okay, I hope you can see all of this. If you can't, um, just send me a little note. Um, thanks, Dave. We're getting there. Okay. Now, the other thing that's in the in the the box is this gadget. Okay, these bits and pieces here. These are called shims. All right, we have a few of these. When you get a pack, you'll get about ten of them. In the jig, you will see. We'll go to the other camera, the little mobile camera. You'll see that in the shim side of our jig, we have five already. That's how I set it up. Okay. So there we have our shims. These are for just adjusting things. Um, we're adjusting the tightness of your joint. Back to here. They're just for adjusting the tightness of the joint. And um, I'll show you how to use those. So that's basically what you get in a standard solo pack. Delay. All right, we'll get those out of the way. And I'll put that out of the way as well. So, standard solo pack, 
Um, that's, that's what you get for 355. Now the other thing that we need to sort of talk about is how you're going to attach your timber to the jig. Now the best way to do it is with a couple of clamps, of course. So what we advise people to do when they buy the jig is to also purchase a pair of clamp holders. That's these little things here. Okay. I'll just go to this camera here. That's what they look like. All right. They are designed to go underneath the hand knob on the top of the jig. I just sit on like so. Go back to my main camera. And they hold a Bessie clamp, just like that. All right? The Bessie clamps come in a pack, of course, like that. You can see for those. These are the KLI uh, 12s. They're quite small, and as you can see, you don't have a lot of shaft sticking out. And when you're using the jig, you don't have it digging into you. So let's put all that stuff aside and I'll show you what to do with the jig. The back. Here's one that I've got set up already. I want to show you how to cut a test joint. Now, first of all, you've got to decide what you're going to do with, uh, with your boxes and what sort of boxes you're going to make. In the first instance, what we're going to do is we're going to make this little box. You can see that little box? It's quite a nice little box. All it's got is pencils. There's no lids involved. Uh, there's no cutting tops off or anything like that. Just a nice neat little box. And as you can see, I use it for, for holding my pencils and pens and things. So what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these and that's going to be the first, um, the first project we do. So we'll just uh, build that. Now these are A10 and of course we have our A10 jig. Now, if I was going to make that little box, generally I use offcuts from, from um, tasks or, or, or boxes that I'm going to uh, or I have made or I'm in the process of making and I've got bits and pieces left over. They're a good little thing to sort of use up your offcuts. Now, these don't look like offcuts, but they really, they are. I'm just going to go to another camera. I'll just show you what I've got. I'll go to my top camera. So I've got four pieces of material. Well, actually I've got five. This one's for the base. Four pieces of material. They're all cut, sanded, perfectly square. So they need to be square on their, their parallels, their width. They need to be uh, parallel in their thickness and they need to be perfectly square, say around the square. Okay, so if we go back to our main camera, you can see um, nice and square piece of timber. What I need to do with that is make sure that I've got enough material left over or some more scraps that I can use. And here they are, they're just little bits and pieces. They're actually not the same size, but they're the same thickness and they're the same type of material. They're what I'm going to use to do my test joint. So we'll just put that aside for a sec and we'll cut our test joint. Now to cut the test joint, first of all, you need your router bits. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's what my router bits are. Now, if you're using your router bits, if you're using your router bits regularly, before you start a project, it's always a good idea to give it a bit of a scrub. Now, just with your toothbrush, pinch one from your bathroom, give it a good scrub and just clean off all of the rubbish in there because they sit upside down in the um, in the um, <clears throat> the jig 
they're going to get a whole lot of rubbish that goes on top. Okay, so give it a scrub and a little bit of machine oil. Now you can get machine oil like that from Woolies or Coles or the hardware stores or department stores, but I I tend to use this little beaut little uh, bottle of oil. This oil is is generally um, sold from Japanese tools in Sydney and it's a really good quality oil. It's nice and loose and it'll go into the crack so just a tiny little bit in top and give it a bit of a twirl. Don't put too much in because if you put too much in you'll find that um, it sprays out all over the place and you get everything gets covered in oil. So a little bit of scrub with the oil. I tend to sort of look after my router bits reasonably well and they last a long time. Um, as well as that, I'm also using relatively soft timbers. When you start using the heavier timbers, you're going to take the edge off there, so you might need to get them sharpened. Or you can, um, you can um, get them changed or, or buy some new ones. But, but they, like I say, they last quite some time. Morning, Shane. Okay. Set up. So I have one other thing that I use all the time is this little gadget here. I'll go back to that mobile camera. This little gadget here. I'm going to be switching and changing from the mobile camera back to the looking at my lovely face, but um, we just have to bear with it. So you can see that it's uh, quite a nice little tool. Now, this is what we call a, high, a, a, um, a collet reducer. So it reduces half down, a half, half an inch down to a quarter, and the router bits are quarter inch. Okay. So, Now, first thing we do is we always cut our dovetails first. Whoops, I haven't got my key spanner. Do it up. So now remember, we're cutting a test joint. You don't need to be um, too prescriptive about how deep you cut your joint, but you do. It will cut the actual size that you're using but you don't need to know, don't need to worry about the height adjustment too much. So when we do the height adjustment, if you don't have scraps of timber and bits and pieces of the same thickness as your template, you can set your template on, set your piece of timber on top of that and you can adjust like so. You need to be above your template and above your piece of scrap timber uh, or, or your off cut, which is what we're going to do the, the test joint on. So just like so. I'm just having a bit of a look here. Pete, well, I generally cut a test joint every single time. Um, oh, okay. So we, I have somebody here answering, Pete. So, <laughs> yes. So it's all good, I, and I'll just go on with what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, where were we? Ah, oh, ad adjusting the height. When we adjust the height, as you can see, this is a little bit difficult to try and get it sort of worked where I've got, I've got to hold everything with this hand and then try to adjust things. So um, that's quite difficult. Now, one thing that we do is I have this little pad here, which we call a height adjustment pad, and I can actually sit that on there and adjust it like that, and it's a little bit easier. I can do it two hands and adjust it like so. Now, when I'm cutting the, the, the joint, I'm going to be half a millimetre. I'm going to be half a millimetre above the pad and, and, and the scrap piece of material or the, the, the off cut that I'm using. Okay, so I'm going to be a half a millimetre above that. 
So, and it's the same size as my template anyway. Now, set up. So when we set it up, this is the other thing that I do. My grain is running along the piece of timber. I'm going to be cutting into the end grain. So what I need to do is I need to have a reference mark on the side of the piece of timber so that I know where I'm going all the time. So that's my reference mark. My reference mark will always point at what I consider to be the bottom of the box. So I'll look at whichever is thing and if the box sits like that, the dovetails are going to be up the side. So when we set up, we set our piece of timber evenly spaced across the fingers of the template. And then we'll bring up a stop. Bring up another stop. Remember, this is just a scrap piece of material. It's not, it's not anything special. Um, if it doesn't work, well, actually, what I'll do is I'll change to a different, a different piece of timber because it's a little bit easier and so that you can see it better. So I'll put my face side marks on. Evenly spaced across the template. So you can see that's evenly spaced across the, tim the template. And I'm only judging this by eye. I don't need to, I don't need to worry about trying to, to get measurements exact or anything like that because logically it's going to all work correctly. So put a clamp on and hold it in place. Now, my techo has been a really good bloke and he's given me a sound cutout. That sound cutout is that one. That sound cutout the director's having another go. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Okay. So my, uh, my techo, I'm going back to where I was before, my techo has actually given me a, a button for uh, a sound cutout, which means that you can't hear my machine screaming its head off. Um, well, I can, but you can't. So when I start the machine, I'm going to hit the button and turn the sound off for you. So don't be alarmed. It will, um, it w it's only me turning the sound off. Okay, so here we go. Well, before I go, I better start. I better explain to you what I'm going to do. There's a pencil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into. You can see that. I'm going to go into the template here, and I'm going to run the bearing up against the right-hand side of my my template first, all the way around the back, and then come out the top. Okay. So if you can see that, all the way through and come out on the left hand side. The same applies to here, and I'm just going to follow that all the way around, going in the right hand side. And the going in the right hand side is because of the way the router bit spins. So it's actually cutting into the piece of timber at all times. So it's always a good idea to, to follow, that, follow that lead and go, just make sure that you're going right to left whenever you're cutting. Okay, here we go. So sound off. So we're back on the air again, and as you can see, we now have 
really nice clean dovetails inside and out. Okay, so nice and clean. Your backing board on the jig is sacrificial. When you start cutting in bits and pieces, you'll find that you're cutting into the backing board. When you cut thicker material, you're going to lose a fair bit of material at the top of the joint. And when you go back to thinner material, you need to change your backing board. Otherwise you end up with tear out on the top edge. So good idea for that. When you've done, <clears throat> when you've done your dovetails, you then turn your jig around. We have our face side mark on the outside and that's the bottom of the box. And I have a habit of actually putting my, temp, my timber into the jig with the face side mark pointing out. That should do that all the time anyway. But I also make sure that my f bottom of my box is pointing at my red stop. Okay, right. so lock that in. And now I need to change the route a bit. Now when I'm using the jig, I'm always pushing the jig away from me. I normally have a dust extractor system sitting on there, um, but uh, it, it can't see anything when it's sort of clogging up the view. So <clears throat> I've taken it off. And now adjust the height. <clears throat> now when you're adjusting the height, always make sure that you're using the opposing piece of material to adjust the height. That way, if you're using two thickness, different thickness materials, you're going to get a perfect fit. So, through there, down to there, just adjusting the height. Shift my pad out of the way. Sit that over there. Now, <clears throat> when you're cutting this one, where's my pencil? When you're cutting this one, you can see that the distance between the ends of the pins is a, a whole lot different, a whole lot wider than the pins on the other side. What we need to do is make sure that when we cut this side here, what we're going to do is cut across the face first. So that little cut across the face there is only going to be a very shallow cut and it's designed to, to start the cut so that we don't get any tear out on the front of the joint. All right. So, back to here, earmuffs. I'm going to turn the sound off again. So, sound off. Sound back on. Okay, now, <clears throat> this is important. When we're using the jig, if you turn the jig around like so and start pulling it towards yourself, what you're doing, you saw when I cut that timber, you saw all of this sawdust spraying out towards the, the camera. If you had it around the other way, it comes back towards you okay so you get covered in all of the sawdust it's in your face the whole time if you don't have a dust extractor system that's going to to pull it away from yourself you're breathing that stuff in straight away it's going straight into your face so for safety reasons it's a good idea push the jig away from you the other thing that happens there is if for some unknown reason you're bearing explodes or busts remember it's spinning fairly quickly it's going to spit out bits of bearing straight into your face so for safety reasons it's always a good idea to push the jig away from yourself right 
have the jig between you and the and the router bed. The other thing that I, I sort of I advocate as well is when you're using the jig, if you hold the jig on the top here, you have very little control over what happens. You can't get a, a you can't manipulate it properly. If you put your hands on the bench, you actually uh, you're only moving a few millimeters. You're not actually moving very far, so you can actually slide in and come out again quite easy with very little movement. A lot safer, a lot easier to use. All right, so think about that when you're using the jig. The other thing is that's why we have the shorter, shorter uh, clamps so that they don't actually dig into your stomach while you're working and looking over the top. In some cases, people who are um, what, what you might say vertically challenged a little, uh, you might have a little difficulty looking over the top, but you can move across to the side and move in from, look through the side of it. You're still getting the same safe response by having everything going away from you. Now, you'll notice that when I did this, I cut from right to left. So I went from there to there. And then I went from right to left, came out the left-hand side. When you're in the right-hand side, out the left-hand side all the way to the back. So think about those little, little tips. Uh, they will help you in the, in the future and you'll always be nice and safe. And you can see there's a little bit of tear out there but not that much that's going to interfere with anything. You're going to be sanding the outside of the box anyway but it hasn't got any big chips or anything happening. Now, <clears throat> fitting it together. You can see on my pieces I have my face side marks. They're going to be at... Um, this, the same when I put the thing together. So all I do is turn it over, stand that one up, and push that in. Now as you can see, that's a little snug. All right. Some people like to have them snug. I've noticed on a couple of shows, people like to give them a really good bash or a tap to make sure that they're nice and tight. I tend to sort of struggle with that a little bit. I think that um, if you're putting too much pressure on it, you're not allowing the timber to actually move around. So it's always um, uh, a good idea to have a couple of tests at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this side. I'm going to work on the other end of the piece of timber and I'm going to recut my joints. Now when we recut the joints, if you have to adjust the shims, when you recut the joints, cut the whole set again. Don't just do half of it, do the whole lot. So Going to pull it apart. Get my screwdriver. Let me go back to here. So all I'm going to do here is just take the, the backing board off. And you'll notice that on the top of the jig, it says shims, adjusted shims this side. So make sure that you're working on the right ones. Just turn this around so that you can see it. So there's my shims. And in my thing here I have five. Because this is a little tight, what I want to do is I want to loosen it up. Now when you're loosening the joint, what you're doing is you're reducing the width of the joint. It's very difficult without this. You're reducing the width of the pin. It's got to fit in that, in that joint there. Okay. That, that will allow it to, to, to slide in a little easier if that's a little smaller. I'll go back here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add I'm going to add two shins just to give you a really good clear indication of actually what happens. I've just put two extra shims in. Once you have this adjusted, you won't need to adjust it again for the whole of the task that you're actually for the whole of the task that you're adjusting it for. Okay, now when you put your temp when you put your stops back on, right hand side. For the red one, so red on the right, black on the left, and then we just redo 
the test again. So dovetails, I've marked this, I've marked here, just so that I know that this is the joint I was using. Just set myself up again. So evenly spaced, bring a stop up. And I'll cut myself another set of dovetails. I'll explain how that works in a sec. Um, just let me cut the dovetails. Two fifty. The shims, the shims are actually two fifty GSM card. Um, you can buy it at a news agent, or um, you, you generally get ten in the pack. So, oh, quite good, quite easy. Okay, adjust my height. and I'll cut my dovetails. Same process. Earmuffs. Sound off. Sound back on. So now I need to test the other side. As you can see, I haven't had to move the, the stops at all. And then we'll change the route a bit. If you're able to, some people actually have, um, have two router tables where they'll set up the dovetails on one table and they'll set up the straight bit on another table so they're just moving from table to table um, over on the side here I've got another table uh, I haven't got a router in it yet but um, that's what I would be doing if I was doing multiple or, or a bulk number of boxes Okay, hope you can all see what's going on. Um, there's been a few little teething bits, but we're getting there bit by bit. Okay, now, test the height. Again, remember, use your opposing piece of material. Adjust my height. And what I want to do is I want to explain to you how this makes a thinner dovetail, a thinner pin. <clears throat> what happens if I go to this other camera what happens this the backing board is an, the, 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 the jig body is aluminium it has a sacrificial backing board and in between the backing board and the body you have these little spaces our shims right? one shim equals about 0 0.009 millimeter of a change in the width of the pin. So it's not very much. So what we're doing is we're actually moving the backing board further away from the body. When you look at the template, you'll notice the template is tapered. So the closer that body, that backing board is, to the body, which is just under here, the less material you take out. So if you take out less material, obviously the pin has to be wider. If you take out more material, which is what the distance is at the top here, if you take out more material, you're going to make the pins smaller. 
Now, we want to make the pins smaller so they fit better into the dovetails that we cut earlier. So to get it into the space, we need to make them smaller and that by moving the backing board away, which means we've added shims, we can actually get uh, more material taken off the pins and they will be smaller. So I added two shims. I added the two shims so that you get a, a, a very clear idea of how this works. It may, it may be too loose now, but we'll give it a go anyway. So see how it works. All right. I need those. Okay, sound off again. We're back. <clears throat> I hope you like that little gadget bit there. It it's, uh, just helps with your sound. You don't have to turn your sound off on your computer or your phone or whatever you're, wherever you're watching. So now we'll see how close this is. Look how easy that is. I put two shims in there and that is a perfect joint. Now the two shims that I put in there were ones that I'd used earlier but it gave me that perfect joint so with my next job what i will do is leave it set up exactly the same way all i have to do now is make myself um, the box components which i've already done i've got some uh, silver ash and some uh, rose mahogany what i've done with this if you notice i'll just get that little box again with this little box, you can see how small the inside of the box is. It's way too small to be able to try and sand anything in there. Now, it, it, if you do, you're actually sanding across the grain, which cuts into the grain, and it's very hard to get it really, really smooth. So before I actually build the box, what I've done is I've sanded down to 600. So it's pretty much done. Might need a little workout with a bit of uh, 500 or um, 800 or something like that uh, before I put it together, but basically it's sanded. So I know where the outside is because the outside's the rough bit. All I have to do is work out which I want for the top or the bottom. Now because this has got two different colours on it, I'm going to cut feet in the bottom, so I might put the colour at the bottom and I'll, I'll cut most of that colour away. And you can see this bit has a bit as well. Whereas the silver ash, it's pretty, pretty straightforward right through the whole grain session. So let's get rid of some of this. And we'll start cutting a box. Now, we've only got 15 minutes left, but what I want to do is I just want to cut the joints to show you how quick it is to cut all of the joints. And then next week, we will start, um, we'll start looking at ways to change the box to make it look a really really nice little piece of equipment so we'll do some stuff like that i'm going to make a jig next week that that will allow you to actually take bits and pieces off the side gives you some shapes and stuff like that so that's what's going to happen next week and it will, it will happen to this little box we'll also get the floor done next week or uh, well, if we can get it done today we will but um but like i say we've only got 15 minutes left so let's try and get the the framework done now, when you're using material that's over, over 90 millimetres wide, and this is not quite 90 millimetres, so let me find a ruler. Here we go. <coughs> it's just on 90 millimetres wide. So, again, it's an offcut. So we don't need to, I don't need to worry too much about it. So... <coughs> Chalk. And my piece of chalk. Now this is going to be the bottom as I said before. So my 
face like mark goes on there and the smooth side that reference mark is always a good idea now during the process of using or cutting your joints you'll find that they'll rub off so just replace them regularly the reason I use chalk if I'm using a sharp pencil and when I was an apprentice people said to me use a sharp pencil you only get accuracy if you've got a sharp pencil the problem is if I went and did that quite heavily I would have that mark fairly cut into the grain and it's hard to get rid of because you, and then you've got to sand the whole side of the, the box and if you're using a doing a large box or a small box it doesn't matter it's going to have score marks on your timber and hard to get rid of so piece of chalk does the trick and then we'll take them there all right let's set up now because the thickness of material was the same on my test joint I can use this space here if it was thinner I would have to change my template and that's just well, my backing board sorry and I would just swap that over but as you can see you've got lots of room on here I can set up anywhere I like on there now depending on what you like with your joints depends on where you set it up if you look at this you can see that I've set up where's my pencil I'll show you I've set up so that I've got half a dovetail here and half a dovetail there that will give me a half dovetail top and bottom I can go this way if I like if I line it up like so and what that does it gives me five full dovetails it gives you a different look a different um, effect um, and that's about all it does so I happen to like half on top and half on the bottom and so I line it up like so lining it up by eye is all you need to do you don't need to go trying to sort of get your measurement here and the measurement there if if you're really fussy about about your measurements the easiest way to line the timber up is to move around to the pin side like so and you can see that it's a lot easier to line accurately up against the pins you can see that's a little bit easier and then it's just a matter of turning your timber around to your dovetails like so and then lock your timber in and, and cut it but this is just a little box this is this is just this cute little box that you can give away as a Christmas present um, so it doesn't matter you can see you've got half a dovetail top and bottom um, so it doesn't really matter if, if, it, if it's a little bit odd or a little bit wonky it, as long as it, but you'll find that everything will fit perfectly if you leave your stops in the same place all the time so what I'll do now is I'll just lock that in place I'm going to use two clamps if I just had it like so what would happen is this side here is a little bit loose it's it's you can't feel the looseness but once you start sort of hitting it with a router bit you'll find that it sort of vibrates a little bit so the joints on this side will be loose these joints on this side will be tight where it's cramped in so the idea is to make sure that it's locked in nicely as you can see it's a little bit crowded but still so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to cut all of the dovetails on both pieces of timber So dovetails first, same router bits, just check your bearing just to make sure that everything is okay. Mine's all good. If the bearing seizes, it's going to do a fair bit of damage to your template and um, that's going to cost you money. I'm just shifting things out of the way here. Now opposing material. My opposing piece of material that's going to go into there is going to be a piece of, guess what I've done? This is not paying attention. When I set up, like I said to you earlier, I always make sure 
that my face side mark is pointing at my red stop to begin with. First cut for every joint at the red stop. That way, because you've lined it up by eye, your joints will all fit together. You won't have little gaps at the top and the bottom. And I didn't have that, so I'll just fix that. So now what I want to do is, I've got my dovetail bit in, adjust my height. Again, that's it's going to go into there. Half a millimetre. You can measure that if you like, but um, I guess is good enough. Like I said before, your dovetails are not, your tightness of your joint are not dictated by um, the height of the, the router bit. It's the adjustment of the shims that are, organizes the tightness. So switch off, sound off. So now I've cut my first set of joints. When you rotate the timber, rotate it like so. I'll start that again. You've come out of there, rotate it like so. Set your piece of timber back in place. Lock it up. Did I forget to turn the sound off? Sorry guys. <laughs> okay, so there's my first piece. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom of the box and these are the two sides. I think we're going to run out of time. Um, uh, Dave Stanton will be um, on the air very shortly. Um, and so I'll, I'll work as quick as I can and see if I can get some of this fairly well done. I'll turn the sound off this time. I've got five minutes, so if I can get this done quickly.
find my stuff, my clamps. Okay, we're back on the air and I've got a couple of minutes. I'm just going to fit this together and then um, we'll finish it off next week. Now, the don't forget Dave Stanton is, um, he'll be on shortly and what he's going to be doing is hand sharpening chisels again. He did that last week, I think. Um, he's really good at it although he doesn't seem to think so. But anyway, he's quite good at it. And as you can see, our little box is actually coming together quite nicely. Just making sure all my face side marks are all in the outside. So basically I haven't had to do a lot of effort to actually put that box together. But you can see we've got nice, lovely dovetails. I'll give you a close up of that. So you can see lovely do dovetails. So next week what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a base in it. So I'll cut a piece of material. I'll show you how to cut the trench on it. We're not going to cut it on a saw or anything like that. We're going to use a router bit. And I'll show you how to do that next week. And we'll get it glued together and do some more other fancy stuff to it as well. So we'll save that for next week. And, um, and um, get the little box finished. It's a good starting point for when you're for using the jig it, it will it, it will give you some sort of confidence once you've got something that you can see has got lovely joints in it all right so thank thank you for watching this week um, next week like I say I'm going to bring another package and we're going to continue with the bottom of the box and and go through some other processes so um, I hope you have a uh, learn a little bit um, I've enjoyed doing it um, it's the first one, it can only get better. <laughs>
every time. There's no measuring, no fiddling, and no fuss. We even offer